with a clickbait thumbnail worked, you're here, you want to know why this is bonkers. This Peugeot 205, does it have a 16 valve engine conversion? An engine taken from a Peugeot 405 MI16 or Citroen BX 16 valve, which has been murdered for its engine? No. Does it have a V6 engine? No. Turbo? No. Is it powered by Donkey? Is it a 1.6 automatic with motorbike carbs fitted? Yeah. Yeah, it is. How did you know? So yes, that is what this car is. It is a 1991 Peugeot 205 automatic with motorbike carbs. That's it. That, that, but it's bonkers because it just, it doesn't work. Now the 205s that 205 people tend to get very excited about are obviously the GTIs, perhaps a rally, maybe even an XS, something like that. GT5 door, I'd love a GT5 door. But the automatic models are largely forgotten about other than when GTI owners decide they want a bulkier bonnet. What's more, this is a 1991 Peugeot 205 automatic with motorbike carbs fitted that took part in a gruelling rally event across Morocco. it probably took quite a long time to complete. The car is owned actually by uh, a channel member, Hello Dean, and he has ba basically kindly let me take it out for a bit of a run to show you because I've driven this car before, but <laughs> it's ridiculous and it'd be quite, I thought it, people would be quite interested in, uh, oh, in seeing what this thing is like for themselves. So what's more, this is quite a rare car because it's only covered 63,000 miles, 63 and a half thousand miles from new. And, uh, and up until it was hammered across Aladdin's back garden, it was pretty original. It's still got the dealer plate on the back. It's, it's survived. It's really nice. But looking around inside here, would you know? You'd expect it to have been absolutely ruined in here, but in fairness, it's not. And it's a typical Peugeot 205 as well, which means lovely, soft, comfy seats, amazing visibility, nimble handling. It's just got a lot of character, a lot of charm about it. They're lovely little things, these. It does mean a few rattles and uh, questionable build quality. Oh, and mushy brakes, like, just, there's about five feet of travel before they actually start doing anything. So, the question, on your lips, why has it got bike carbs fitted and a rorty exhaust? Well, I'll come on to the exhaust later, but uh, yeah, the bike carbs issue. Well, it's a means to an end, basically. The 205 automatic was only ever offered with PSA's XU engine, which means the smallest petrol engine you could get in that range was a 1.6. And that, in turn, is the second biggest petrol engine available in a 205, which isn't necessarily what you want for your sort of giffer spec. For speed freaks, that's great, but perhaps for Doris waiting for her hip replacement, it's not, because it means her insurance will be as high as her fuel consumption. And I guess it's also not a good look if your if your automatic Giffa spec car has more power than the warm hatch option, which would have been an XS or a Rally or a GT. Um, because in standard spec, this engine produces around 90 horsepower. So, and this is a complete assumption. I think it's probable that Peugeot might have detuned the 90 horsepower engine, the one that's used in the BX. And, and it was down to about 78 horsepower, something like that. 
Now, I don't know exactly what they did, but I know that there was a model of BX called the 15RE, um, or in this country, it was the 16RE, but that was a detuned version of the 1600 engine for economy. And I can only assume they did that to this car. I would say to give the gearbox an easier time. I don't know. I think this gearbox is the same as the one used in 1.9 BXs, so it doesn't really seem that it would need that. But one of the things they did to strangle this engine was put a weedy little carburetor on it. I forget the exact make and model of the carburetor, um, but it was basically the failure of that carburetor that led to the fact this car now has motorbike carbs fitted. Um, this car originally came to me a while ago for a carb strip and rebuild to try and get it to run properly. Um, but even with a rebuild kit and the best repair manuals I could find, I could not get this thing to run properly. Uh, like if you know, if you got it to start cold, it wouldn't idle hot. If you get it to idle hot, it won't start cold. If you get it to do both, it'll idle at like two and a half thousand revs or something like that. Um, after scouring the forums online, owner Dean decided, or concluded from what he'd read, that uh, they all do that, sir. And he followed the advice other owners had already offered, which was throw it away. Um, so he did. But rather than opting to upgrade it to perhaps the natural uh, progression uh, in the chain, which would be a Weber DRTC as fitted to my BX, um, he decided to choose violence and he opted for a set of individual motorbike carburetors. The results are hilarious. Is it fast? No. No. Very, very no. Is it confused? Yes. Yes, there is a, a certain amount of confusion going on with this car. It doesn't really know what to do or what it's meant to be doing. Quite a lot of body roll as well. speed limit here is 30. I don't think that's a concern. This is uphill. Kick down. Don't think they've got the linkages quite right. I didn't fit these by the way. It's not actually kicking down and I don't want to push too hard. Let's try. There we go. Let's go for a drive. That's the second ratio. Oh, there we go. She filled the revs up and she goes okay. My God, it makes a lot of noise doing it. Basically, what Dean has done is removed all the pleasant parts of the Peugeot 205 automatic and made them unpleasant. Because it's not quiet anymore, it's noisy. Now he is going to amend that, he is going to get rid of that back box. Fitted a sporty exhaust to it and then immediately regretted it. There's a Porsche Taycan, is it? You can't touch me, mate. But it is doing the most important thing that it could do. Providing entertainment. It's fun. I'm enjoying it. It's a giggle. That's the most important thing, right? And of course, in taking Dean and his mate across the deserts of, I don't know, Morocco, Sahara, Serengeti, I don't know, wherever it went, somewhere well out of its comfort zone, it's provided him with memories as well done everything a car is meant to do if you have a car for entertainment if you have a car for getting around you can probably do better but if you have a car for putting smiles on your face this one will do it just as well as that tay tay can toy can don't know. and it's not just giggles because it runs much better too okay the cold start choke situation is pretty bad um because and that's putting it kindly 
um, because the mini locking choke cable is not strong enough to uh, lock the weight of all four carburetors. So you have to close peg it. Um, and it's got about three millimeters of travel. So if you get it wrong, it won't run properly. But once it's warm, it's still a lovely flexible little engine. And that's what this was with its standard carburetor. Um, with these carbs, it's it's the same. If anything, it's better. It's just so, so sweet and smooth to pull away from tick over. Uh, all 205 automatics have power steering, so it's like really easy and chill to just potter around town in at slow speeds, um, which is probably why Dean uses it as his daily. I mean, how about that? He's done a Moroccan sand rally in his car. Now he drives to work in it. And it's a car that is completely not suitable for that job. It's brilliant. Sand rally, not the driving to work. This 205, of course, has the vacuum sunroof. I'm not going to attempt to open that. It's a lovely big sunroof and it would be lovely to open it, but I have a fear that if I open it, he won't be able to close it again. So that's a no. For most of us, uh, Saharan dust is uh, a natural occurrence that when wind blows from the east once or twice a year, it makes us curse those of us who own dark colored cars. Only on this car, it's an inconvenience for the distributor and the cooling fan and the heater matrix and the heater blower fan and the door handles and the door hinges and the roof lining everywhere. Oh, okay. I was gonna go for some power, but it decided, nope, we're gonna change gear there. So I'm, I'm being mean with the gearbox in terms of its performance and everything like that, but if you, if you keep it in the ratios, it, this actually goes quite well. How it drives when it's just in D or four, because it doesn't have D, it just has four. One, two, three, and four. And how it drives in there is so different to how it drives if you get it to hang on to the gear. We are experiencing some arch rubbing down these horrific UK roads um, because it's wearing 205 GTI 1.9 alloys, but it doesn't have a 205 GTI 1.9 axle, which means the wheels are closer to the bodywork than they're meant to be, which means there's a bus in my way. So there we have it, a bonkers Peugeot 205 that's bonkers in completely different sense of the word to all the other 205s out there that you see. Thanks for watching. You can you can go now.